Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a dramatic sports background that's really simple that you can take anywhere. Okay, so I'm in gyms all the time taking pictures. Some are better than others. One safe spot to, to take photos a lot of times is in front of the bleachers. Maybe you could light them, maybe not. Uh, but typically that looks pretty good. But I've also had situations where I've been in auxiliary gyms that don't have any bleachers. So all you have is metal walls. And that presents a problem because how are you supposed to get a good background that way? So one way that I found that works well anytime is just having a collapsible back, black background with you. So this is a, a Westcott uh, X-Drop Pro. You don't have to get Westcott. You, there's other brands that make those. That's the, the brand I prefer. It's made really well. They've got different colors. I usually use black, especially for something like this. So just a simple two light setup that you can do anytime that you don't have a good spot to take the pictures inside a gym, or you could do this outside too. We've got an FJ400 on a boom with a Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish as the main light. And then back behind the subject, we're just gonna have an FJ200 with a blue gel on it. And it's gonna be angled directly at the back of our subject. We're gonna use atmosphere aerosol to spray in the air to get some atmosphere. And you, could, you don't have to use atmosphere aerosol, you could use a fog machine or, or a haze machine, whatever you want to put, some, to put some substance in the air so that the light will catch it and spread out and so that you can see the gel. A lot of people make that mistake. They wanna use gels, but they don't realize there has to be, there doesn't have to be atmosphere in, in the air, but if you want it, the, it's almost like the flare from the light catches, catches the fog and so it spreads out that color. If you don't have that, then it's probably just gonna hit the edge of the person and, and, and maybe not that much depending on what kind of light you have in the position of it. So you have, to, you have to have it back far enough. So we've got, Gabe, why don't you go ahead and come on over here. So, yeah, so he doesn't play football, but he's gonna, we're gonna pretend today that he does. So I've got him, I, I don't have, we actually have a third light that I didn't mention is a fill. I may or may not use this. This is just a silver ref reflector that comes on the FJ400 and it's just to fill in the shadows below if I decide to use it. We've got the light angled, it's up high on this boom and angled down. So he's gonna get shadows under his eyes and his chin for, for a lot of drama. And I'm just gonna see how it looks. I may like it like that. I may add in the fill, we'll just kind of see. Um, so I've got him just a couple steps behind. Scoot up just a little bit. And then this other light, one, two, that's just like three steps behind him, angled, like I said, directly at his back and it's about shoulder height. Um, we've got, so I'm shooting on the Sony A7R5, uh, 70 to 200, 2.8. We've got the main light at 5.3 out of nine. And then the, the fill lights turned all the way down to one. And then that backlight is on eight. So that's an FJ200, like I said, so it's not as powerful as the other two lights. It's only one stop less, but, so that would be like seven out of 10 on the, on the 400. So it is turned up. That's not a, a real formula that I use, but you want it to be bright enough you can see it obviously, so it needs to be brighter than the main light. Okay, so let's take an ambient picture first. We're at 1 2 50th, F 6.3, ISO 100. Bring your hands just up, just a hair on the ball right there. Okay, all right, ready? Squint your eyes just a little bit for me. So I'm gonna turn the backlight off and the, and the fill light. So there's the main light. Okay, let's try the backlight only. Okay, so that did show up actually more than I thought it was going to, honestly. So that, that showed a little bit of blue. Once we add that fog back there, it's gonna really enhance that. I think that might be because we have a little bit of fog in here already because we've already sprayed it. So I wouldn't take a chance with that though. I, I would bring the fog, the canned aerosol or a fog machine just in case, just because you wanna make sure that's gonna show up. Okay, so then we're gonna turn this, the fill light on, see what that looks like. So that's just adding a little bit of light underneath and then the main light, go ahead and do your pose. Look at me, squint those eyes just a little bit, look tough. There you go, good. Good, okay, all right. Eli, you wanna step in now, we're gonna spray some fog and really that's gonna put this picture over the top, make it look cool. All right, go ahead and get in your pose. All right, go ahead whenever you're ready, Eli. There you go, good. Let's turn that fill off. Spray a little bit more fog one more time. I'm gonna put the fill to sleep and see what that looks like without it. Pull that head out just a little bit. There you go, good. That's perfect, good. Elbows up just a little bit too. There we go. I actually like that better without the fill, I think. 
It feels good for adding detail back into the shadows, but with this particular shot, I think that looks great. Okay, so that looks awesome. You can do that anywhere. Now, I'm gonna show you one common mistake that I've seen a lot of people make that you don't wanna do. So, that, so if in a gym that's, that's you know, a normal size gym, you, could under, you don't have to have the black background, you could underexpose the background and make it black. This just ensures that you're gonna have a solid black background. So if one mistake though is that if there's like metal walls or something or, or any other color wall besides black, which they're, usually the, the walls aren't gonna be black, people might do the, have the wall behind them similar to what we do in the studio here, and anything brighter than that is not going to look good. It's going to really muddy everything up. So now we're going to move that black background. I'm going to show you what it looks like without black, with, with white in this case. It's not going to be totally white because we're not lighting. It's going to be like more gray, but just to show you the difference. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. It looks okay, but not nearly as good as that. To me, that's that really, I mean, that's significantly better just because of the contrast that it gives you. And when you know when you're doing sports pictures like that, that can you know little differences like that can be a big deal. So, okay, so I just wanted to show you guys the difference real quick. Actually, let's do a couple shots so they can see. Gabe, go ahead and move out of the shot. We'll take one. Let's take one. Let the background light asleep. There we go. There's with it on. Okay, so I had the light tipped down, almost straight down. So that is, the reason I did that was to add the shadows to make it more dramatic. But also you need to understand that the light is going to hit the background if you have it this close to a wall, right? So when it's tipped down like that, that's feathering the light. It's not aimed at it. So it's really not gonna, it's not gonna light it up at all. This is gonna be different, all right? Go ahead and get in your pose. Don't do the fog just yet, we'll do that next. Elbows up a little bit. Good. Okay, so now you can see now it's more definitely more gray. All right, go ahead and put the fog in there. Yeah, so now we're losing even more color now. So we went from black, kind of like medium gray, and then an even lighter gray. So it just gets muddied up. All right, so with the black background behind him, obviously it's not gonna matter. That's why you bring it. If you, put, if you shoot with the gym behind him and you underexpose, then that's gonna make a difference too because you can make that black. But if you're up against the wall like that, you need to understand that if you tip the light down, it, it, it's not gonna hit it. And if you, if you don't and you don't have that background, then it is gonna hit the wall. It's gonna affect the shot quite a bit. So, okay, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell so that you can get notified when I post new videos. We'll see you again next time.